Hi everyone, it's Helen here and thank you for joining me today. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make an envelope album using the envelope die from Simply Made Crafts and the small ultimate binding system. So let's have a look at the papers first. You may remember these from um, beginning of the year. This is the Grand Day Out paper pack. I absolutely love this collection here and I've got most things already prepped already so I've got these envelopes here already done there we go absolutely beautiful patterns there and the die sets that I'm going to be using today oh I put that out of order I wanted that one first so the die sets that I'm going to be using today are the small ultimate binding spine and die set I'm sorry if that's a bit bright let's see if I can fix that Okay, yes, so that's a little bit better. So this is the small ultimate binding and I'll be using all three of these dies for this album. And I'm also going to be using the large envelope die set. Now, this is a really nice, big, sizable die set. You can make your wedding um, wedding uh, invitations and RSVPs from this. I'll pop some pictures here on, um, on the release of this die set. It makes absolutely beautiful envelopes. And I'm also going to be grabbing this pack here from my botanicals collection this is the peony pearlescent paper pack and it's got some lovely shades here so you can actually use these um, sheeny shiny satin pearlescent papers for making your flowers and we also have some patterned papers in here as well so you can use this in your ordinary crafting so if I open up this envelope here you can see I have lined it and this would be the die here for creating that mat. So if you can imagine if you're make, even making wedding invitation cards, that is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so another thing that I will be using is some grey board and I'm gonna give you a, me a measurement here. I mean, I will have the project on my blog and that will be linked down below where you'll find this video you will find um, the products that I've, I'm using today and as well, and I'll pop in the measurements for this. Okay, so your grey board needs to measure four and three eighths by six and three eighths and this fits the envelope perfectly. Okay, so when I actually designed this envelope, I did design it so the height of this envelope is the height of this binding so there's no trimming there's nothing it's just so easy to put together and I've already covered one of them with some of the paper okay so let's get die cutting okay so I'm all set up for die cutting and I'm going to be using the go power and emboss if you want me to do a review on this I've been using it a good couple of months now I'm super happy with it and it's now available at craft stash so that has made me super ecstatic as well okay so here is the die set I've just put it onto a magnetic sheet this is the main die there so it's going to cut everything out in one go and just to have a quick uh, close look at the die set this is what will do the envelope liner and we have this beautiful optional extra of these lovely leaves as well so that is going to create some gorgeous envelopes and you get the mats as well if you want to create cards that go inside okay so i'm going to be making a quick envelope using that i've cut it down to a4 already so you are going to be needing a large format die cutting machine for this one now i'm using plate a at the bottom plate c my paper facing up, my envelope die facing down, and plate B on the top. Okay, so all you have to do is just turn that on and press run, and it just literally goes through like that. You don't have to kind of really push it in. So if you have any questions about this machine, do let me know in the comments. Compared to the Gemini, it's quieter. It is slightly slower how it runs through, um, but it's, it's absolutely fine for me. And I've had no warping whatsoever 
with the plates. I've been using this a good couple of months now and that is my cutting plate. And you can see I've used it quite well. So basically you need to turn it. If you get to the point where you can press the middle down like that, where it, where it kind of lifts up in the middle, that is when you need to turn it. You might have to do it every couple of goes. You just turn it over and then just carry on. And then I keep this top plate here, this B plate, that is literally my top plate. I never die cut on that and everything stays super straight. Okay, let's move this aside. Here is our envelope. I'm gonna grab myself a bone folder. And we are just going to press everything down. It's picked up, it's picked up some bits there off the uh, off the die plate there, but just, you can just write those off. Super easy envelope to make. Just fold everything down. It's done all of the shaping. It's done all of the score lines. So all you have to do now is add your adhesive along the sides going to be using art glitter glue today I'm still getting on with this quite well I have tried the the beacon Fabri-Tac as well on some of my projects and I have made a separate video on that one so that should be out very shortly as well as this fit along with this video as well okay let's press that down Okay, and there we have our envelope. Now, if you want to make a liner, you grab this die here. I'm, I'm only going to tell you how to do it because I want to get on with the, um, the prepping and the, the making of the album. I don't want to be ages on this video. Um, so grab your paper pack, choose your paper, Okay, and I can't remember the measurement for this. Basically, you cut your paper to six and one eighth, or just a tad under that as a strip, and then you can pop this on like that, and then you can trim it further down here, and then you can just slide it in, and there you'll have a beautiful lined envelope, just like that. As you can see, this doesn't go all the way down. If I can lift it up, I think I glued it together actually. That was clever. There we go. See, it doesn't go all the way down. You don't need to unless you really want to. Okay, so the next step is to grab your paper trimmer. Oops, sorry guys, I'm just making so much noise and mess here. Okay, so we have the bottom of the envelope. Now, what we're going to do is just take off the end from there to create an open envelope. So I'm not gonna take much off, literally like a sixteenth, a sixteenth of an inch. There we go, round about that much. I think I moved the camera when I knocked it. There we go, and the sun's gone in. There we go, it's probably too bright now, okay. You should have something that now looks like that with an end. Oh, that's way too bright. Okay, so you should have now something that looks like that. Okay. So, you need to be making yourself six of these envelopes. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six. These are all ready to go. They've been prepped. I'm going to set those aside. Let's work on our covers. Okay, so I've done one already and I gave you the measurements of that already. And I have another sheet of this matching paper. All I'm going to do is grab my double-sided tape. There is a trick for this. And you're going to be needing a flat surface with a right-angled corner. And this will save you getting your scissors out and again i will list this down below the um there will also be a supplies list in the description box if you don't fancy popping along to my website there and basically you just do that 
cuts it very nicely. There we go. Right, so give that a press down. If you have one of these big bone folder from this one's where we are memory keepers I love this just press that down and then you can lift this up this tape comes off really easy okay there is sort of a direction so I don't want to kind of go sideways so I'm going to keep it vertical on that and I'm going to keep round about an inch going around there and just trim that off now I am using envelope dies for this however if you just wanted to make an ordinary envelope album I do have another video um, that I made a few years ago on a full envelope al album from scratch using ready-made envelopes so if you want to watch that one I will link that in the description box so what I'm doing now is I'm just getting my bone folder and I'm just pressing around the sides just like that just folding up you can also pressure uh, use the pressure from the whole mat just to do that as well that does help bend it round okay I am going to be using some red tape whoops I'm I'm just throwing everything around today everything's sticking together okay so I am actually going to use some red tape on this and I'm also going to be using wet glue here as well just because I like to use both it gives it a really good instant addition with the tape and the glue is there for for long term um, sticking I guess long term adhesive so when you use both you get the best of both worlds and again I have better results using red tape with the grey board Okay, and I'm not going all the way to the corners because I'll be trimming this off however I'm not adding it on after I have trimmed because I would like edge to edge right here where I'll be cutting because I will get a better stick that way too okay so I'm gonna cut off the corner now and I'm not gonna go straight up to the point here I'm going to leave round about an eighth of an inch on there let's see if that will focus hopefully hopefully you can see that gap and do the same on all of them if you want to draw a line and use a ruler you can do but um, as you make more and more of these if you're new to this you will kind of get the, the feel for it okay so let's take off I'm just gonna take off first one and I always like to start I don't know why I always like to start on the top long one and I'm going to add my glue now I'm going to be adding glue along here this doesn't affect the stickiness of this at all and I'm going to add some glue along there and some along the middle and then I'm just going to fold it over and then grab my bone folder a bit of glue has come out of the edge that's fine and give that a really good press now I'm going to go to the opposite side and do the exact same thing okay so let's pop these corners in now so all you need to do now is grab something pointy you can use your scissors or your bone folder point and we're just going to push in this overlapped hang here on the corner we're just going to push it in just like that see that I've kind of just squished it I've just squished it in 
and do the same on the other side. Now our bone folder is perfect for this job. And this will give you really nice, neat corners. And I, I trimmed my nails and now I can't lift anything. I can type quite well now I've trimmed my nails, but other than that, <laughs> it's the only bonus, I guess. Okay, just press that down with your bone folder. And there we have some lovely corners. Now, if you do have any troubles with your corners, um, let me know in the comments and I will see if I can help you. Um, please explain kind of what the, the actual problem is, whether it's exposed edges um, or exposed corners or it's not wrapping well. Always happy to try and help with that. Okay, now I am going to make some covers for this too, but I'm going to add that after I have attached it onto the binding, which uh, the binding we are going to now be moving on to. So I'm just going to grab myself a piece of card. Okay, this is 300 GSM. If it's in stock, I'll, I'll, I'll link it anyway. It'll, it'll appear in... Um, when it's in stock so it's been a long time since I've bought some because it's taken me a while to work my way through it so let's just bring this in again okay so here is the ultimate binding system and we need to die cut one of these and three of those. Okay, so I've die cut all of those out and this one I'm going to make a decision on what colour I'm going to use with that one um, but that can wait until the end. Now all we have to do now is fold all of these score lines and if you're wondering what these dashes are for these are sized so that you can trim them down to match with other mini album pages from my album range. Okay, so we've done all of that, so let's get gluing. I prefer to use glue for this. So we're gonna start with the first one. We're gonna add glue all the way down there. And now this one is gonna go in the center. one I'm just making sure that is straight because if any of these go on wonky you will have a couple of wonky pages okay so the next one I'm gonna add the glue and then I'm going to pop this one in the center so it has an even gap either side again keeping it straight And then the last one goes on the other side.
Okay, so there we have our binding. So I'm just going to leave that for a few moments now just to dry. Okay, so that has had a few moments to dry and I'm going to be starting with the outer covers. So the outer covers are going to go on the two outside hinges which leaves us room for six pages in the middle okay so this is going to attach onto there I'm just going to do a quick dry run just so that you can see what I'm doing that is going to glue just onto there and then we're going to put a mat across here just to hide the hinge that is attached onto there okay so grab your glue again Okay, so I'm going right up into these corners and it's got very dark and gloomy outside. Okay, so I'm going up to the score line so I can still see the score, the score line there. Just looking at my monitor so that I can just make sure that I'm showing you properly there we go that is the first one done okay so that's going to be our back page and then the, the front page I need to turn over we don't want anything going on upside down so that's good and then that's going to be our front page Okay, so that is the basic cover done. What you can do now is you can take the same paper and mat the spine, or you can create an additional spine using this die here. That is going to cover it, it's gonna give it the book curve as well. But I haven't made my decisions yet on what color or what card. I'm going to use. I may even turn to the Sizzix texture roll and see if that would look good. Okay so I have these in the order that I want them to go into the book in and I'm going to start from the back so I'm just going to lay these out here and I'm just going to take each one from the bottom and most of these are lined. I think there was one I forgot to do but I can I can fix that once all of these are in. Now Oh gosh, I did go to town with gluing these in, didn't I? There we go. Just making sure that I can actually open this up because I did glue some of it down. Okay. Right. This now should slide on the binding just do a dry run again so it's going I, I totally missed that <laughs> there we go so that fits on the binding just like that so I'm going to add glue to both sides of the binding and then I'm going to before I press everything down I'm going to line everything up so that everything lines up with the back cover keep everything straight and then I'm going to press down while it's in the flat position otherwise you're going to end up with a book with pages that don't really like to turn very well and they're all pages sticking up like that not the best look okay so i'm going to do my wet run now so adding glue to both sides again if you're more comfortable and happy to use red tape for this you can Okay, 
and again you can decide which way you want it so I'm going to have all of my flaps coming out this way so again just like the dry run going I'm popping on till it kind of stops but I still want to see the score line if the score line does disappear it means you're not going to be able to turn it very well lining everything up I'm happy with that press down there we go and the more you do this the neater um, your results will be okay there is our first one added Okay, so I, I've done this now. Let's just quickly show you. This is the book and how it is looking at the moment. So we need to make our little covers for that. It's looking really good. Okay, so I've measured the inside. So I need to cut my papers at four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So I'm going to be needing my, my big one here. Are the big kahana and I'm just gonna cut this actually I think I'll just do them both at the same time okay so six and a quarter and four and a quarter and keep all of your off cuts those off cuts were very good sizes so they can be used elsewhere okay so I have two sheets now and we're just going to glue those in the inside of the album just like that I mean you can do matching ones but I thought I would do a slightly different look to the back I'm thinking maybe this one will look good here with this one at the back, yeah. Okay, so all I need to do now is do my binding, like my spine cover, and make some little inserts to go in each envelope. Again, you can use some Velcro pads or dots to keep those closed. If you want to go down the magnet route, you can do. Okay, so moving on to the, the spine cover. Um, I'm going to be using this piece here. Now, what I want to be creating is 
if you use this as an example, this is my Alice in Teal. There's a full tutorial on this <clears throat> album on Craft World, which is an exclusive full tutorial. I think it's in three parts, but um, that is available at Craft World. I will link that down below. It's absolutely free to watch. Um, this is the lovely spine. And I've used it using the Sizzix texture roll. So it comes out nice and smooth and shiny. I don't know if that one's done. No, that's been through. And this is all I have left from that particular roll. I have literally used every single little piece apart from that tiny. Maybe I can use that for some die cutting or something. Make some nice shapes with that. But anyways, um, this has been through the wash. So that that is um, what has caused this lovely texture here and this one here is what I'm going to be using today so what is this stuff this is like the um, if you have pairs of jeans you have that printed tag on the pocket very lead and well-known leading brands have them and they go through the wash just fine this is the stuff it's just like if you've heard of craft text it's literally just that you can sew it you can glue it you can cut it <clears throat> you can die cut it you can have so much fun you can wash it so let's pop this through Okay, so here it is. So all we have to do is fold on the outer line. Now this is pretty thick material, so if you do want to use a scoreboard, you can do for this one. On ordinary card, it would be absolutely fine, but because this is almost like a false leather, just go in on the outside score lines, just to reinforce that, that's gonna make it so much easier for you to fold over just like that but again you won't need to score it if you are using ordinary cardstock there we go and then to make this curvy you can use your bone folder just to try and get in there or all your fingers even just to give that a bend or a curve and there it should look something like that what we're going to do now is just glue this onto there and you should have a little bit of a gap over there so when you open the book I'll demonstrate on here when you open up the book it opens out just like that and that adds a great amount of flexibility on the pages laying quite flat when you open it right so let's start with the back cover first again I'm going to be using glue I guess maybe this would be a perfect job for Fabri-Tac but I'm going to be sticking with my art glitter glue hoping there's not too many shadows caused by myself Okay, so I'm just going to, this is the back cover, I'm just going to pop that on so that the score line lines up with the bend, or oh, I put that far too far over. So you want that corner there and that corner on that one and completely flat going down. okay so it should now look like this and you need to leave this to dry just for a minute or so before you move on to the next stage so while that's drying I'm just going to add glue just to the other side now Ok 
Okay, it's easier to get your hands under there and use your thumbs as well. Use as many fingers as you can and just line up the points here with that score line and the end of the cover. So you do want this gap appearing whilst you do that and you need to get really good adhesion here where my thumb is. That is where it's going to want to lift away if you don't have enough glue. Okay, so there is our book. I can't remember if this is upside down now. There we go, yep. And the sun's come out just as we're finishing. So there is our album. So all I have to do now is make the inserts for the envelope. So actually I need to take a measurement now or two because I haven't pre-prepared pre this one. So because we have our binding, it's glued inside the envelope up to a certain point, we're not going to have the full length of the envelope to use. So I'm just going to pop in my ruler and this is three and a half. So that's the width of my insert. So three and a half by six would, you can even push it up to six and one eighth if you want to. But I'm going to stick with the six because it ma it will match the length of the, um, the envelope mat. So that was three and a half by six. Okay, so this measures three and a half. I'm gonna cut that, keep the good bit by six. That will be our insert. You can make this out of cardstock. I'm just gonna be quickly showing you just from pattern paper. So you can decorate this with photos, with flat embellishments. And again, you can do the back as well. So this is going to fit just in here nicely. There we go, and we can close that, and there you can have a really nice interactive album with lots of little pockets. So every single page has a pocket. That's gonna look really nice. So what am I gonna use this album for? Well, it's my wedding anniversary tomorrow, and I still haven't fully scrapbooked, and I'm not too sure how to kind of document document it I mean um, it's been well, it's our 10th wedding anniversary tomorrow on the day that I'm filming I'm not too sure when this album will be released um, so in my heart I would like to do a nice really a nice really big homemade um, mini album um, but this one will be really good for just putting the smaller photos in this would be perfect also for giving away as a gift. So if you've been to someone's wedding and um, you've taken loads of photos, you can just pop a, I mean, this was really quick and easy to make. You can just make one of these albums, make your little inserts, and print off your photos as well. Especially if you love printing off the small ones, it's absolutely perfect for this. So I'm gonna have a little think on what I'm going to be putting um, my photos in here for. This would also make a lovely baby's album too. It's just lovely and summery. Okay, I'm bubbling on now. So everything that I've used today will be listed down below. There will also be a project blog post to go with this where you'll find this video, the supplies list and some measurements here for the grey board. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me today. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments down below. If you would like a better review on my die cutting machine, let me know down below as well. So thank you very much for joining me today and I'll see you all again soon.